Hey, everybody, and welcome back after a week break. Hopefully, everybody had an amazing and amazing Thanksgiving, um, and everyone ate way too much. I know I certainly did. I, in fact, I made sure I did. So now we are back to finish out the year. We've got a couple more weeks of the show. We are ending the show this year with Steve Saka. We're doing a Saka Claus episode. I've got some giveaways to to do um, in in absolute throw out to Abe DeBabna. And uh, so it is going to be an absolutely incredible show. And thank you to everybody tuning in tonight here at the Rocky Mountain Cigar Show at the Smokin' Studios. I screwed that up. Why do I do that every single week? I can't get over this. I always mess that up. It's the welcome to the Smokin' Studios at the Rocky Mountain Cigar Show. I don't know why this is so hard for me, but it is, all right? Just, I, I've got a lot going on. i got a few companies, a job, this. So, anyways, big, big shout out to all the sponsors that remotely make this show possible. We've got BAMP Cigar, ROCF Cigar, Christoph Cigars, Karen Burger Cigars, Sagrado Cigars, New Air Humidor. The description below, you will see a promo code for 15% off the uh, big humidor. Definitely utilize that for Christmas. It's a really good time of year. And then Banff and ROCF also have a promo code below in the description for 15% off site-wide on both sites. Nothing's off limits. I get nothing for it, so please utilize it. Spend your heart's content, and let's help support these great companies. McAuliffe Cigars. We've got Big Sky Cigars, Cornell and Deal Pipe Tobacco, La Aurora Cigars, and of course, Abe DeBabna over at Smokin, as this is the Smokin Studios at the Rocky Mountain Cigar Show. What is everybody smoking tonight? If you're out there, throw it in there. Hopefully, it is a West Tampa. We'll get into what... Uh, um, Rick is smoking here in a little bit when we bring him on. Just want to go ahead and let everybody know the uh, advent calendars over at Smokin. There still are a few left, and I will tell you they are absolute. Oh, okay. So camera went out. Give me a second. Uh huh. This makes no sense. All right, hang on. Okay. Oh, I love life. Uh, let's see. I have no idea what just happened, but um, we're going to go ahead and bring in Rick here. And Rick, while I'm screwing around with my camera, because I'm always having technical problems, although the show will probably be better like this. Cause... Uh oh. Hey. Uh oh. Can you hear me? Hold on. All right. I have. So I have absolutely no idea what just happened. Rick, you there? Rick. Rick. Yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah. This is great. Oh, hey, Rick. We can hear you. Fantastic. Uh, you had me uh, froze. I was like, oh, no. Um. 
All right, so let me get this turned off. I have no idea what happened. I'm on my phone. Yeah, hang on. I have no idea what happened. Can you hear me? I can say this. You, you, you have, yeah, you have a uh, faithful radio. So when the screen was gone and I only heard you, that's a good show. That's a good show. <laughs> I do have I do have the perfect face for radio. One hundred percent. Absolutely agree with you on that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, so well, I tell you what, as I'm screwing around with uh, with my settings here, trying to get everything working up again. Um, okay. Go ahead, tell everybody a little bit about what you're smoking tonight. Normally, let me see here. Uh, we are going to have our first segment kind of got discombobulated, but we'll get right back on track, Rick. So we are at our first segment of the night sponsored by Dunbarton Tobacco and Trust. Thank you so much, Steve Saka, for believing in the show and supporting the show. So what are you smoking tonight, Rick? Mm -hmm. I'm smoking a new blend that I'm going to come out with for next year. I just uh, drove in to, from uh, Tampa to Miami. I smoked a, a uh, Amazon Basin and a red uh, Lacero. And now I'm smoking this one uh, to see it would stand up for a guy that smoked two or three cigars before he smokes one of ours. So, so far, so good. Yep. Fantastic. Awesome. And I will be smoking the red. And I will be washing it down with Axe in the Oak Cask Strength Bourbon. Um, so tell everybody about the red. The red was released at PCA this year. Actually, for those of you that don't know, Rick was incredible and worked with our charity this year and was so kind to allow us to release the red as like the first big release for the red. I say big release first release after PCA. I think it was before it even officially hit the shore. Oh my gosh. Okay. I'm losing. Here we go. Uh, tap. Okay. And uh, yes. And so uh, Rick was kind enough to, to give us the red for the event. And it absolutely was a knockout for the event. Everybody loved it. Uh, oh. forever grateful for you giving such a brand new cigar. I don't even think it was on the market yet when you, when our event took place. Um, but, uh, tell everybody a little bit about the red and, uh, why this one's so special to you. Well, again, uh, when we, Okay. Okay. Sorry, so Rick's got, losing a little no, bit of no, connection. No. Yeah. So I, I don't hear you that clear. You're kind of freezing. Okay. Um, you wanna, you think you, is, you just stop and get back on? You think you uh, shut it down and get back on? Um. Let me see here. I have, this is driving me absolutely insane that this is even happening. So, um, yeah, right uh, now you're see. frozen. Yeah. I don't know how, uh, let's see. Can, um, um, and why is this doing this? But right now we have a connection, so I'll just talk until... Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Yes, please. Why is the red so um, special to you, and uh, and how did you come up with it? Well, the red... Uh, so when we started the company, I was still working with Jumbo Scar and CAO. So we had to do a lot of behind-the-scenes things to get ready for the launch of West Tampa. And so when... I didn't have the time to go to the factory and work on blends and select tobaccos. So I had to rely on the team of Garmendia uh, to say, okay, what do you need from us? And I kind of explained through, uh, you know, text messages, uh, through Zoom calls, what I want for red, I mean, for white and black. 
and I was amazed that every detail that I wanted, the body, uh, the flavors that I wanted to receive for the wrapper, not the filler, and black, I wanted to receive the flavor from the, uh, the fillers, not the wrapper, he was spot on. And I say, okay, this is amazing to me because you're kind of, kind of doing surgery with your computer at the beach and some computer is cutting me open in New York and doing the surgery. And it was amazing that he could do that. So, but Red was the first opportunity that I had to really go to the factory, work with his team and says, this is the creation I'm going to really put my uh, uh, thumbprint on and let's do this. Uh, uh, that. So we're looking at the tobaccos he had access to. And one, he mentioned right away, I want to work with this new Mexican rapper that I just received. Bro, stop. I, it was one of the rappers I've always wanted to work with, but somehow it didn't fit the projects for CIO. So the minute it came up, bro, pr perfect. I don't want to do that. So we started to blend. And that take us maybe we sampled maybe 15, 18 blends. I said, one stood up, the blends that we smoked today. I said, this is it. This is it. And so I think if you look at any company out there, I don't care if it's Papine, Iraqi, Davidoff, General Store, they have all that have one uh, pit. They're going to say, thank God we have that one because it allows us to do all these other ones. But when, are you see, hearing me? Are you hearing me? Okay, so I think we think red is going to be that that shiny uh, blend that we have. If you look at uh, my old regime, CAO, uh, we were kind of struggling until we uh, uh, created Flathead, and Flathead just took off. And so today, General Cigar still, at least we have Flathead, just the soldier that works for us every day, every month, every year continues to grow and i think uh, because of the style the flavor the body it's just that is perfect we like the black we like the red i mean the white but this red is something special i can't hear you i, I can't hear you i can't hear you look here there we go. How's that? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. For sure. So my microphone muted. More technical problems, everybody. It doesn't matter. We're 12 minutes in. We got it back on track. Rick, he's been great. Thank you. Um, so like I told you off show, um, you know, the red hits absolutely all the flavor profiles I love. That really nice full body, uh, full flavor, great pepper mm -hmm. note. Very smooth, mm -hmm. but yet slightly gritty on the smoke. Really nice oiliness on that. the wrapper. It is absolutely fantastic. Um, great notes, a fantastic profile. And I've told you this, and I've said this to your face, and I've said this behind your back. I think you saved your best for when you left CAO. And that doesn't mean that what you did at CAO wasn't great. It was. It was fantastic. But you're really shining here coming into your own product. And, you know, this is absolutely a fantastic cigar. I don't think it's a, a thing I'm saving. I, I think I'm learning more and more and more. And so every project should be a little bit better and a little bit better. And you're, all you're doing is a manufacturer. Do not settle for the climb to the first peak. There's another peak. Climb that one. It's scary because you look down, bro, we're farther up. We can really tumble. But don't worry about that. Climb, climb, learn and climb. And so along the way, you're going to slip, fall down a little bit, but pick yourself up and continue. And so I think when somebody says you're saving or this is the best, you, well, thank you. But it, it wasn't on purpose. It's because I learned uh, to understand my fan base and what they desire for me because everybody has to pick their lane. I'm not Davidoff. I was thinking that today. If you break some of these companies down, 
look at, uh, you know, Davidoff as uh, the owner of like a high end steakhouse, like uh, the Ruth Chris of the world, uh, the, uh, the Palms of the world. This is white tablecloth cloth steakhouse. I was coming for Jello Scar. More of them every man. So there were more of the outback guys. The, uh, so uh, the, the good steak, but a good price point. And so now I know my fans, and I know, I think, what they want from us. And so that's what I want to do. And now, because I have access to different tobaccos, different techniques, Looks like his internet is um, not the greatest where he's at. So give him a second here and he's coming right back in. Hey, can you move closer to the door? Yeah, a little closer to the hotel. All right, hold on. Hold on. There's a lot of packing up. Well, while, while you're doing that, uh, for those of you that don't know, yesterday was Rick's birthday. And I'm sure if you guys are Facebook friends or Instagram, you guys all saw that. But uh, Rick's birthday was yesterday. So it, it means a lot that he was willing to come on the show tonight uh, as – the day after his birthday, I, I that's awesome, and it's always appreciated uh, when you when you're willing to come on. So um, I'm not Hold the on. greatest at filling this Hold dead on. space, right? Like I, I, I'm yeah, just not. On, I'm not Kevin. On. Kevin's Kevin's uh, better at dead on. space than I am. <laughs> but while Rick's getting set up uh, there, okay. um, let's see. Okay, this there is he close. Goes. I can't get right now. So that Hold is on. perfect. Let me that see. is perfect. I'm get to. Uh, Oh, hold on. I need to get my uh, drink now. Mm. This is live. This is what you, uh, you know, have sometimes live. Absolutely. Publicly. Absolutely. Live. Unscripted. Uh, Reality it's TV good. at its finest. Okay. So, but. Um, okay. So, yeah, yesterday was my birthday. Uh, I'm not uh, celebrating any more birthdays, so I told my wife and my daughter, uh, if I see a card, a uh, pancake, uh, with a little <laughs> fucking uh, candle with it, I will leave you guys. And they did, you know what? Uh, they Good for them. They did absolutely nothing for me. Absolutely nothing. Like, okay. You don't, you don't have to take it to that extreme, but. <laughs> they did, but uh, thank you. All right. Well, so. well good. Um, so, Rick, I want to kind of dive into here a um, little bit of kind of how you got started with CAO, but what? more of what you haven't talked about before. So more of kind of how that door even opened and then a little bit more into who mentored you at CAO and, mm -hmm. and, and who did you learn under originally? Okay. So, uh, you know, again, uh, as far as uh, CAO is concerned, nobody, because the reason I went to CAO, because that blender retired. And so after my training, so go back to on time. So uh, about, well, going on to, in 2000, I was hired uh, with General Cigar to be a salesman. And I was a salesman in uh, Florida from Tampa, Orlando, Jacksonville, and the Panhandle, half of the state. And uh, I was a salesman for about four years, uh, but very good uh, because I really loved the job. I loved what I was doing. And so I just started to sell cigars. And uh, I was so good at it. The owner at that time, Mr. Coleman, came in to me. I say, hey, bro, uh, we need some help. Uh, a lot of our uh, blenders are going to retire, and we're going to be uh, out uh, with a blender. So we're going to train somebody, and we have selected you. And I said, like, bro, I really don't know anything about cigars other than how to sell. Don't worry, we'll train you. And so uh, that was maybe two, four and a half years into my uh, business with uh, General Cigar. And then I 
they shipped me to the uh, factory in uh, the DR, and I trained in the DR for about uh, maybe six months uh, to a year. And then I left for that to train for six months uh, in Nicar uh, Honduras. And after that, I trained with Benji Menendez. And uh, he was uh, in charge of Particus. And I trained under Ernesto Perez Creo uh, for fermentation. And then what happened was when I was done with my training, it took me about uh, five years of training. After that, uh, they decided Ernesto is leaving La Gloria. You're going to be responsible to carry La Gloria. So I went to work with La Gloria for about maybe 18 months, created three cigars for La Gloria, still in the market. And then they tapped me on the shoulder. We just bought CAO and we're going to ship you to Nicaragua. And I didn't want to go. I didn't want to go because I was so happy with La Gloria. La Gloria was doing this. And CAO was doing this uh, when uh, General Cigar took him over. And uh, I, I, we're not asking you. We're telling you you're going to go there. <laughs> and so I went there and uh, started work uh, with the team in uh, Nicaragua. And we created the first cigar, OSA, for CAO. And it was okay. And then they said to us, if you don't correct this down flight in th uh, three years, we're going to sell a CAO to CI as a house uh, blend company. Wow. And so you only have two or three years to correct that. So OSA was okay. And we uh, launched a new, uh, another cigar called Concert, an epic failure. I mean, a huge failure. And uh, so, okay, or, you, you, you know, we don't know. Maybe one more year and we created Flathead. And after that, uh, off and running. So the training for me, I've been trained. Uh, if you look at the CI, uh, CA Hall of Fame, I've been trained by four Hall of Famers. And there's nobody in this world right now that can say I've been trained by four Hall of Famers. Even Carlito, I've been trained by my father. Hall of Famer, that's one. Who's the other one? No. George Perjone, one, my father. But I was uh, trained by Ernesto. Frank Nessa that owned Villa Zion, created Punch Excalibur, Benji Menendez, an owner of the H. Hutman factory in Cuba, and Mr. Coleman that owned General Cigar, taught me how to respect and work uh, with people in the factory. So all I needed to do is shut this and open this, and they just, just taught me so much. I'm still learning every day. But uh, my foundation was laid out for me, and I can now build a high rise, not a, a house, a high rise, because the foundation is so deep, so beautiful, uh, so strong uh, that I can now build not only for General Cigar, for, uh, you know, La Gloria, CAO, now for my family and my partner, Gus, and we can build uh, West Tampa. With uh, you, I mean, it's such an incredible story. You were a salesperson. They dumped you into they dumped you into blending. Mm -hmm. Five mm -hmm. years later, they mm -hmm. said, "Fix this company, or we're selling it." Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You turned the company around with literally Flathead saved CAO for sure. So, as you're growing, and now you 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 knocked it out of the park with Flathead. Mm -hmm. Um. I still think that's probably CAO's biggest selling cigar to date, right? It is. It is. Uh, it took and over, has uh, been. Uh, well, it took over. So uh, I think now, uh, I think CAO is going to be 28, maybe 30 years old. Uh, for the first three years of our existence, it was Brazilia. Uh, for their last 10 years of CAO's ownership, it was Brazilia. So Brazilian was number one, number yeah. one. And then uh, all of a sudden we made Flathead in that turn, Brasilia to number two. And uh, Flathead is definitely uh, uh, what I'm proud of is we they make more six by 60s than any other cigar that General Cigars makes. That's the, the, the one size. They make more six by 60 than any size from Macanudo, Cohiba. La Gloria, 
punch, Excalibur, Hoya. It's, it's, it's just amazing how that little cigar took off. And uh, what is, really is amazing, how long we worked on the project called Flathead. Usually they give me a year. How long do you think it, uh, you know, it took us to make Flathead? Well, if they gave you a three-year, more realistically two-year turnaround mm -hmm. time, they probably gave you six months. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, it took us one week. One week. Three Whoa! Blends. Three blends in less than a week. We, we made a we made a, my blend and two from the factory, and we started to smoke. My blend happened to win that competition. And then, but I'm sitting, smoking this cigar on Tuesday. Now, we're okay. We're decided out of the three, this one, yes, but it's burning too hot in my mouth. I'm not receiving the flavor from the tobacco I thought I was going to receive. My roller that I always work with, he says, Ricky, let's box press it. I looked at him. Who's the, break, you know, who's the master of litter? And who's a roller? Brilliant, bro. Let's do the test it. And we test it. So Wednesday at 4 o'clock, we smoked the first time the flathead with a box press. And we looked at each other. Okay, this is something special. We don't know it's going to sell, but we are happy with this blend. Let's launch this plan. And I think the co the combination of the packaging, everybody loves the packaging, the story behind the car engines, the pinup girls, they love that. And, okay, now it's time to sell a uh, cigar. And they smoked it. Okay, what is this? What is this? This is good. This is good. How much? You know? It'll be $20? No. It's uh, $9. Mm -hmm. No way. No way. And it, it just took off. Yeah, so yeah. magic can happen uh, in a little fucking environment. Uh, and sometimes if you just focus. No, absolutely. And, and so so what year is this, the Flathead comes out? So this is going to be, okay, uh, this will be 15, uh, 14 or 15. 2014 or 15. Okay, so you're, so take us back. Now, no, all no, of I'm a sorry, sudden. Sorry. Uh, no, no, 2000, no, no, it would be, yeah. It would have been earlier be, than uh, that. So uh, I, my training was done and uh, started 09, so oh. Oh, maybe 10, 11, because that was the third time, 11. 11. Okay, so yeah. in 11 it was released. Mm -hmm. So take us back to where were you and what were you doing when you found out that your cigar saved the brand? How did they come up to you and say, this thing just blew out of the water? When we, uh, when the PR director got uh, notification from, uh, uh, from uh, Cigar Fish and Auto, uh, we just rated our top cigars of the year, and uh, we have placed uh, uh, Flathead number three. And that was what? Because number one was a DR cigar, and number two was a Cuban-made cigar from Cuba. And number three was our cigars. And it was the highest rating, highest position that General Cigars ever been. I think LaGloria had a top, uh, maybe seven or eight cigar, but a top three was. And then all of a sudden, it took off. I mean, took off. And they all looked at me as like, okay. I think we're going to be okay. Well, what are you going to do next year? <laughs> and uh, I said, well, I'm working on a new project for the World Blends, and we're going to create uh, uh, Columbia for the World Blends. And one of my favorite cigars to this day, Columbia. Very mild, but very fun. But we also had access to the strain tobacco from the Amazon. Okay, let's do this. We'll launch two cigars, one Columbia and one called Amazon Basin. Basin, yep. And that really, okay, who is in charge of flaming? So he gives us CAO by head, and now he's giving us Amazon Basin, something so unique, so different. We have never experienced this cigar. Yep, it's just access. Beautiful people working with me. A beautiful company that realizes, oh, that's a unique tobacco. 
where do we do it? We could do it with Macrido, could do it with Punch, could do it with Religoria, but CAO, because of their foundation, their DNA, always trying to, to discover new tobaccos, fit. And so you play with it. And we just launched it. And we didn't know what we had. We did, really didn't. Uh, I remember spending more time selling Columbia and say, yeah, I have, I have this little fucking thing called Amazon Basia. And everybody, what is this band? How did you get this band? Oh, it's tobacco. I've never seen this. Let me smoke it. And it was the first time General Cigar allowed you to buy one box. Because General Cigar always had kind of um, three packs. You have, if you want Amazon Basin, you need to buy a minimum of 10. This is a time, yeah, bro, I don't know if it's going to be a bomb or a hit. So it's just sell it. With, and we sold it one at a time. One at a time. One guy came, I'll take three. I'll take three. They got back, shared it with their uh, fans. And like, oh, my God. We screwed up. We need more. And we only made uh, 5,000 boxes. And for there, uh, every year that we launch it, it was, it was it's our Alpus X. It was our Alpus X. Everybody's waiting for it. Are you going to launch it again? Yes. Next, uh, you know, uh, you know, February. Perfect. Perfect. So what, where, what was the first thing you did? After realizing you hit number three, did you go and smoke that cigar? Did you call your wife? Did you sit down and just go, holy shit, is this yeah. real? Yeah, I was because in the, that's your garage. first cigar. Yeah, that was I, I was in uh, my garage. And I remember I was very close to Victoria, the PR director. And she called me and says, uh, Ricky, uh, have you followed the top 25s? And now I don't really, you know, no, I'm not that guy. I said, well, you're in it. I said, what do you mean we're in it? We have, uh, you know, they rated, uh, uh, you know, Flathead one of the top 25 cigars. And I said, oh, my God. And she said, what do you think it is? I know it's going to be maybe 23, 21, because it's going to be on that range of, you know, 25 to 20. Now, a little bit lower. Oh, no. Uh, A 15? No. Lower than that. No way. There's no way we're in the top 10. There's no way. Ricky, you are. And I, I remember almost uh, starting to cry because it was the first time that I realized that I can pay back everybody that took a chance on me to say, this is the right guy for this right job. And for that, I was just doing my job. And for that was the first time I was able to say to everybody, to the owners, to the general manager, you selected the right guy. I did it. I did it. I, I did it. And uh, so it was overwhelming, overwhelming, but uh, happy for everybody, more happy for everybody else because the spotlight was on the factory. The spotlight was on the marketing team that created this box and all that. And then I was just there to accept the trophy. But look around. I couldn't do it without my director. Couldn't do it with my producer, my sound guys, my actors, everything. I have to have somebody have to collect this, but it's not mine. It's all everybody. So overwhelming, overwhelming. So I'm going to ask you a question Mm -hmm. that might be a little introspective, and I'm not sure. I'm not sure maybe you've ever thought about this before, although knowing who you are, you probably have. Have you ever thought about if it wasn't you? Would CAO exist? Have you ever thought about that? Uh, yeah, and I think it would. Uh, I think, uh, you know, again, uh, uh, General Cigars are smart people, and they would uh, find the right connection. I, I, you know, nobody knows, but I, I believe in that company that they will discover uh, what is right and who's right for that job. Uh, fortunately for them, they chose me, and it worked out for us. Uh, but, uh, no, uh, there's... You know, when when you're a blender, you, you, you it's all about you. You, you sometimes, but it isn't because again, there's this team of people that you go to these factories. Your tobacco manager, your hold, roller, uh, the blenders, uh, the uh, you know the general manager. They're all giving input to the all these blends, 
and so, but you know, at the end of the day, you have to have somebody to lead the team, and I was chosen for that. And uh, my style of leading was based on what I learned from Benji Ernesto: take care of your people, respect your people, and they'll work hard for you. If you don't respect them, any time they can fuck with you, take the wrong turn, they will do it. To get back to, if you respect them and you show them the love and the respect, they were work. So, uh, yeah, it, I've been fortunate that every team, every company I work for, from Gloria to uh, CL, now to, uh, you know, uh, or Germindia and uh, Jose, the owner of uh, the uh, factories making West Tampa, great teams, great teams, great teams, the best teams. So, again, I'm just kind of that Super Bowl winner, the guy on the team that won five Super Bowl rings but never played a damn. <laughs> He's just lucky. He was traded to Dallas. You're, you're going to go to, to fucking San Francisco just collecting rings along the way. <laughs> And that's really what I'm doing, just collecting rings because these guys are just working magic for me. Well, don't don't sell yourself too short. I mean, you're you're you've you've been in this and at this for a long time now, and you've definitely definitely have the experience, the expert. I would call you a master blender. Mm -hmm. I know that's a title that's given, never mm -hmm. taken. Uh, so I'll say it. I would absolutely yeah. call you a master blender, especially literally. You saved the company. Right. I mean. Regardless of if you were never there, would it be around? The it, that's not the case. The case is as you did. So, what I want to ask you too is, how much of that CAO portfolio are you actually responsible for? Or were today, you today? Uh, you know, today, uh, you know, with uh, you know the uh, the changes of you know dropping lines and all that, uh, maybe sixty percent. Uh, if oh. what's uh, you know uh, easily because you know they still have the Brazilians out there, the Americans out there, the Italians out there, uh, you know the gold, the Cameroons out there. But we can you know come back with uh, you know concert uh, sessions, uh, bones, uh, the Arcania series exactly. So we have kind of kind of changed uh, the new management team that uh, took over your local restaurant, but added some other uh you know andre so okay oh this is good too you know i i, I thought it was a pizza parlor only but now you're serving me spaghetti lasagna <laughs> yeah so for sure for sure so i want to see if if you agree with me on this i i was a big fan of the bones mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i kind of mm -hmm. felt on my palate i felt the bones was mm -hmm. the flathead without the high octane would you mm -hmm. agree with that I never thought about that because uh, the bones were uh, kind of a process that uh, it, back in the day, I really want to train people, not train, but uh, kind of teach people the difference of tobaccos. And so what we did was launch back to back session and bones using virtually the same tobaccos. If you look at session, it is a Maduro and, uh, but if you look at uh, uh, at uh, uh, bones, it's not a maduro; it's a natural. And so, what do you mean? Oh, well, if you taste the session, you're going to taste the natural sweetness. Uh, but if you smoke the bones, that sweetness is not there because we didn't treat it like maduro. And so, two wrappers, the same wrapper, performs different by fermentation and aging. And that's what I want to, uh, to, you know, everybody to discover. Just because it's black or dark doesn't mean it's a maduro. And my training, in my eyes. Now, this is something that uh, I've always said to everybody. If Rocky Patel says to you, bones is maduro. Perfect. In his eyes, his training, everything's black or deep, uh, you know, dark. Uh, Barber is fermentation. It's natural. What is maduro? Aged tobacco. That's it. But yeah. in my eyes, if we do not change the charts into sugars and cook that tobacco in the high temperature, the releasing that start to turn into sugar, we cannot call it Maduro. Like a look at part of his black. I've learned this from Benji. Part of his black is a jet black cigar 
know where the box is from Oduro. Because if you take that cigar, rotate it in your mouth, there's no sweetness. Uh, if you look at is black a Maduro? We have red, uh, a white and black. Everybody, oh, I love your black Maduro. Well, thank you so much, but then it's not a Maduro. Yeah. Because if you rotate it, there's no there's some there's sweetness. But so would you call that an oscuro? That's just it's not a Maduro. Color, that's just a color range. Yeah. That's I, it. it's Instead just a of that range. euphemism yeah, of exactly. Maduro sweet. Yep. And okay. so I would say this is natural tobacco. We all we did was ferment it a little bit longer. The wrapper that I'm using on white is the same wrapper I'm using on the black. All we're doing is fermenting the tobacco about three months longer. If you take your banana and the white is the banana you're going to eat in the morning time after your job is yellow. But your wife is going to say, hey, do not eat the other bananas. I'm going to make Banana bread, and she's going to let this uh, the bananas right in bed. And just all you do, it's just leave them alone. Two days later, there's brown. Three days later, it's kind of a uh, deep black. Five days later, jet black. Now we can use it. And if you open that to banana, what do you discover? So much more sugar. Yes. Because you're allowing it to ferment. And so that's it. So what, that's the reason. Yeah. So if you're smoking the white and the uh, the uh, black, what we do, now we know, if I blindfold you and gave you the, just a wrapper of white and the wrapper of black, blindfold it, it's our bro, okay, give me the other one. No, you're smoking, no. Give me the, because I'm not smoking, the two are the same. Take your blindfold off. No, no. Now, what are you doing? So we want the flavor of a white for the wrapper, downplaying the filler. For the black, I'm going to take the uh, the flavor from the filler, not the wrapper. Downplaying the wrapper. Two, two different cigars using the same tobaccos. That's interesting. I, there's so... This is where I don't think the well, I this is not I don't think I know the average person, the average cigar smoker, the one to two to three to four or five a year, don't get geeky about this. But there's so much goes it, there's only so much tobacco for variations, so you have to get super creative with how you make those variations work. And and that is a lot more complex than I think what the vast majority of even cigar smokers realize. Uh, that, you know, that, that, that's not their fault. No, of course they, not. Of course, because not. they're not. It, they're just sampling the famous product. We, because what you do for a living, uh, because you're talking to everybody, you know so much more than your local. I don't care if he's pounding five cigars a day for the last twenty years. What do you know about words? I don't know this. I know this. When I smoke it, I like it. That's it. That's it. That's it. I don't care if you don't know the difference. That's my job sure. to talk to you. Okay, let me explain this. Oh, I love your Maduro of the black. And I would never. I'm like, oh, hold on, hold on. This idiot just called my fucking black of Maduro. No, no, I said, bro, no. Hey, bro. Is not Maduro. Let me explain because I don't want to embarrass him. And he's sure. going to go away and see, he's like, bro, talk to Ricky. This guy's fucking amazing. So that's what I want to do. That's my training. My teachers always taught me that way. And so if I can share, because I'm in the business, I should know more than you. I should. That is true. But that is very my true. job is to share what I know. But the beauty of this Whatever I share with you, you can kind of throw it away when you talk to Rocky, when you talk to AJ, because they're going to have their own beliefs. That's the beauty of this. I just run one Italian restaurant. There's other Italian restaurants out there in the market. So if you don't like my pizza, don't give up, it, but try Rocky's, try Puffin's, try fucking Puente's. You'll, you'll just suffer. Somebody's making your pie for you. 
Oh, yeah, I'm a firm. That's why I've never ripped a cigar. When I used to do cigar reviews, I've never openly ripped a cigar. I've, I've just not posted the video if I didn't like it. Because yeah. who am I to tell somebody a cigar isn't good when I can only actually tell them that it's not good from my standpoint? Exactly. Not that it's not, and that's exactly. on, and that's what I try to tell my friends that don't smoke much, and they're like, "Oh, dude, I just saw this cigar that you were smoking that said it was so good in the clearance bin. It can't be that good." I'm like, "No, no, 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 no. Different palates around the country smoke different cigars. Like, don't ever look at a clearance bin and think that those are bad cigars. Those are just cigars that didn't sell. So, like you, I'm, I'm a firm believer of." There's a cigar, there's a palate for every cigar. Unless the cigar is just purely bad, which I'm sure you've smoked plenty of those along the way. Um, but that, not to the market, because right now... No, correct. Who, who would... Who would you, you have to wake up and get your team together and say to you, hey, let's make a shitty cigar. I don't care if you don't like it. I guarantee you, somebody lose sleep over that cigar. Somebody was talking and turning. Is it great? Is it good? We don't know. I have launched cigars that I, Pallone. Pallone is my, one of my favorite cigars I've ever fucking been a part of. Can't sell the cigar. Cannot sell it. I Why? It. Pa packaging, maybe. Price point, maybe. Uh, the color of the, I don't know. The color of the band, I don't know. We know this. Eight people buy by eyes, memory, and the palate. Oh, I remember CEO. I like it. You're already setting your, yourself. I don't care what you taste. You're going to kind of like it. And, but if you say, I don't like that style, okay, you have to overcome that. So, yeah, it's, a, it's amazing. But to me, um, every cigar has somebody who's going to say, this is a great cigar. The reason it ends up in the bin sometimes because of that. Maybe the packaging is wrong. To, to take concert. I have another record. I have the highest rated cigar in Jungle Cigars history. I'm fucking very proud of that. But I also have a record I'm not proud of. Off the market. Concert was off the market, completely off the market in 18 months. It was so bad. And we discovered it wasn't bad because of the cigar, the presentation, the box, the band. And so I was sampling the cigar because we were getting kind of feedback. Ricky, nobody's liking this fucking cigar. Really? So I'm in an abyss. Oh, concert. Mm, yeah. Hey, bro, I'm working on a new project. Reach for Smoke the cigar. <laughs> and they smoke it. Oh, my God. Now I can support this. Yes, bro, yeah, thank you so much for your time. And I want to say, hey, by the way, here's a band I took off called the Concert because you uh... eyesight, memory, <laughs> and so I never did that. But I just wanted to prove my, to myself it's not the cigar; it's something about the presentation is missing. And so, Absolutely. sometimes the cigars in the bin will be that because ah, uh, your box is pink. I don't like that. I don't like that. Or it's just that that shop. Oh, we're all full body cigar guys. Oh, this is a mild cigar. That's not going to make it. Throw in the bin. Throw in the bin. But if you're a uh, uh, mild cigar guy, you how much? Two dollars. Two dollars. It should be twenty. Two dollars. And you smoke it. What the fuck? This is a great cigar. Not for my shop. Not for my shop. And, and that's what a lot of people don't realize. A lot of shop owners, to their, in my opinion, uh, detriment by to their taste over oh, their sure. consumers. Sure. Yeah. Not yeah. all of them, not even maybe the majority of them, but there are several that I know of that buy oh, to sure. the owner's flavor right. first and foremost, which I don't think is right. It's like, buy, it's like going it's to so Walmart wrong. and only having great value. Because that's all Walmart likes. You know, right, it, it, right, it just right. doesn't make sense. But, you know, to each their own. They run their business how yeah, they want. Sure. But yeah. so last CAO question, and then we're moving mm -hmm. on. Okay. Should anybody be concerned 
that their favorite CAO that you blended potentially could be different now that you're no longer there? Yeah, uh, really not. Because uh, Jungle Cigar is smart enough to realize that why would we change anything? It's working. So, but shit happens sometimes. Maybe there's lack of that tobacco. And so even sometimes I was in meetings, Ricky, one of your blends, we're not receiving that tobacco. So you need to kind of tweak your blend. And uh, so we had to tweak it and add a foreign tobacco. But we smoke it, bro, unless you're like us, you're not going to know the difference. Uh, but uh, yeah, but I, I, you know, I still smoke a lot of CEOs. I still uh, buy every new cigar that they uh, launch because I want to say I'm just sp- still a fan, but I don't think they would uh, purposely uh, change anything, change the wrapper, change the blend because it's working. Now, if it's not working, maybe, uh, you know, I can help them correct that uh, you know blend, but they have other people to correct it. And sometimes it's going to work. Sometimes it's going to uh, not work, but uh, I don't think Jones cigar, if I said, if you're a fan of CL, continue to support that company. Continue not to support them, just continue to smoke a cigar you enjoy. Absolutely. But if you enjoy my blending techniques, try a West Tampa sometimes. Yo, a- yeah. If you have a West, I'm going to tell you right now if you have a CAO and a West Tampa and you're deciding between the two, go with the West Tampa. That's the new updated 2023 model of Rick right, exactly. uh, and, and, and go yeah, with bro, that. Uh, you could never, unless it's like a, a classic car, usually when you go older, you don't get better than newer. So try right. Rick's newest stuff uh, before you dive into the portfolio, learn where he's at now, and then go back and experience uh, where he started. I, mm-hmm. I think you'll you'll have a lot of fun doing that. So, Rick, how long was West Tampa in the making for? Uh, so we started to, you know, kind of a, a great story because uh, um, in 20, uh, my partner was the uh, VP of marketing for General Cigar for seven years. And uh, we were kind of struck up this friendship. Uh, we, I didn't work with him because I had another marketing guy that I was working with, CAO. He was uh, overlooking General Cigar. So he had to work with CAO. Uh, marketing guys, uh, Cohiba guys, uh, Macanudo, a Punch, and all that. And so, but he was a great leader. So I was always peeking my head in, hey, Gus, how you doing? Good, good. How you doing? Good, good. And so we had this friendship, and he went away. And then about uh, three years later, he always called me on my birthday and New Year's. And he called me in 20. I said, what are you doing? I said, bro, I think I'm going to retire. At 22, I mean, retire. I was going to be just fully done. Get out the robe. I'm retired. 21 happened to shut down. My daughter was stranded in Nicaragua. She was traveling the world. She graduated college about now 20 years ago. 10 years ago, she left us. And she went to the Philippines and she's traveled the world for nine years. Uh, went to he lived in Australia, uh, Asia, visit Europe, all of Central America, was stuck in Nicaragua. And she called me and said, Dad, when I make it home, I'm done with traveling. I want to get in the business. What business? Your business. For first time, she doesn't smoke cigars. First time I ever heard Sarah, Sarah mention Such my business. Delight. And I said, okay, are you serious? Yes. All right, it, when you get home, if you make it home, if the world doesn't collapse, we'll talk about it. And about three months later, she finally made it home. And I uh, said, Dad, I'm serious. All right, let's do a shop together. And then I called Gus. I said, Gus, I am going to retire, but I'm doing a shop with my daughter. He said, bro, I want to get back to the business. And he says, can I be your partner? Yeah, for sure, because I'm a smart man in tobacco, a horrible businessman. Don't know anything about business. 
And he said, but he's brilliant in business. I said, bro, you know what? If you can't do a, a business plan for us, and he did it, and we're going to open the shop in Tampa. And uh, we were about to maybe three weeks for signing our lease. And he called me out of the blue. I said, Ricky, I'm out. I said, what do you mean you're out? I can't do it without you. No, 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 you, you're going to be fine. Because if I do this, I live in Richmond. Your, your shop is going to be in Tampa. As your partner, what I want to do, just sit back and collect your hard-earned money. You're not going to, uh, you know, not going to like that. I'm not going to like that. It's going to destroy our business partnership and our friendship. So I'm out, but I'll do this. I'll help you and Sarah open your shop. I said, bro, I, I can't do it without you. He said, Ricky, have you ever thought your own company? I said, no, never thought it because I'm so happy with General Cigar. The only reason I left General Cigar, because my daughter said, I want to work with you. And General Cigar is not going to hire my daughter to make me happy. Okay. <laughs> they should. Let's do it. And she, they should. They should. I said, that was the they fucked up. But, they did. but, you know, whatever reason, we didn't do it. And he says, all right, let me, give me a month and I'll do a business plan for your own line. What do you want to call it? I want to connect my circle of life. I want to call it what my grandmother and grandfather from Cuba came to Tampa to roll cigars in 1953. And they didn't go to Ivor City. They went to West Tampa. It's another story. So I want to call this company West Tampa Tobacco. Interesting. Well, interesting because I know it's going to work. Because traveling the world for the last 10 years or 15 years for the General Cigar. I was always in Europe or Asia. Where are you from? Florida. Uh, we're in Florida. Tampa. They had no clue. I don't, nobody had a clue where Tampa is in Florida. But they always responded, oh, cigar capital of the world. And they had this rich image of Tampa. I said, bro, this is going to be great. Because the image of Tampa is out there. All we needed to connect that image to our a company. And it just took off. And everybody, they, some people are still to this day say, hey, bro, I've been smoking West Tampa for 30 years. No, bro. Bless your heart. <laughs> You're smoking something you think is from Tampa, maybe a Wednesday, Jason Newman, but we're not. No, we've been around. No, we've been around for 20 months. No. So it, it was built in already for us. And all we did was steal that rich history from Tampa. That's an incredible story. And I will tell you, Sarah is Sarah's Sarah's one of my favorite people in the industry. She is an absolute sweetheart. Oh, bro. Um, thank you. She thank was you for she that. was a knockout hit at the charity event. She was moving and shaking and mingling and talking and and everything. And then I think she closed several deals while she was out here in yeah, Colorado. She, she like she, she was, she was spot on. She's great. Yeah. Uh, what a yeah. fantastic asset. Uh, and it's bro, amazing you. that you get to work with your daughter at, at the same time. Um, so what, where did you start? You, so you, you created this company, you now have West tobacco, West Tampa tobacco. Mm hmm you wake up on a Monday, what does Ricky do? Yeah, because, uh, you know, if you look at the timeline, uh, my last event for General Cigar was mm -hmm. on a Friday, uh, the 29th of uh, uh, April. And May the 2nd, we launched West Tampa. <laughs> I know. So <laughs> it was over the weekend, and even General Cigar, very prepared, but they were shocked. They're like, what the fuck? The fuck? How do you do that? Don't worry about how I did it. And so it was bang, bang. And so I remember waking up that next morning, kind of lost. Uh, okay. Wow. Where do I hang my hat? Oh, I don't have a place to hang my hat. I am the hat rack. Now to have somebody else hang the hat. And that was shocking to me. And I can say this, uh, bro, I don't say this often, but for the first nine months, it was brutal. I was angry, depressed, and the success 
that uh, West Ham was having because I'm still a kind of in that mindset that I got out of this situation, but uh, I was talking to so many people still with General Cigar. Hey, Ricky, if you can, hire me. I want to go with you. I want I wanted to leave General Cigar. I don't like it here. Uh, and I, was, I felt like I was on a raft and I was turning around. I was happy for myself because I had a raft, but I was looking at the ship sinking and my friends were on the ship sinking. And uh, it was Sarah that uh, said to me, Dad, you got to fucking shake this. Your success because of your hard work, your effort. These guys that you think you're leaving behind have the, the same opportunity. They can say to themselves, I don't like it here. I don't want, I just want to change and change. You did it. So why are you upset that you're successful? And these guys, and so you're right. Just be happy for us. Be happy for your company. Be happy for your partner. Be happy for the factory guys. Your guys. Don't worry about General Cigar. And that was kind of the start of me ex- kind of enjoying the success of West Tampa. But the first, the first nine months, I was really miserable. Really miserable because it was it just was explosion. We wanted to open our first year 100 shops. We wanted to be in two to three countries globally. Year one, second trade show, we're already in 475 uh, uh, shops and over 38 countries. It was never, ever been done before. Never. Uh, you know, to go to Spanish Auto, so we did the research. It took, you know, uh, Rocky Patel 10 years to be saying, I have 400 shops. It took him. 20 years to say I have 25 countries. You did it in less than 13 months. How? I don't know. Fuck. You know? I don't know. Good cigar and good history. Because I knew I have friends out there that they were going to, uh, you know, kind of. Our first 75 accounts didn't even know the blend, the name of the uh, the, uh, the cigar, or the price point. And they were all saying, we're in, we're in. Why would you do this for me? Bro, bro. You have a history. It's you. You it's have you. history. Unless you're going to forget how to blend, bro, I'm still selling a lot of flatheads. I'm selling a lot of uh, bones. I'm selling, bro, we're V5. And uh, we watch it. It, it, it. That's incredible. So, like, mm-hmm. again, you have quite a bit of, quite a few records in the cigar industry. Yeah, uh, under your name, and you're too humble yeah. of a guy yeah. to to wear right. them out proud right. yeah. or out loud, I should say. You wear them proud, but out loud. Um, but you know, kudos to you, man. That is incredible. And and I told you from the start. I think I actually texted you on your retirement, and then like three days later, I texted you and said, "Holy shit, you started a company. That's awesome!" <laughs> you know, like like that was that was incredible. And I I know I was a fan right from the beginning because I followed you at CAO. I, I smoked a lot of your CAOs, and I knew that you were going to just knock it out of the park. So, when somebody looks at that success that you had, mm-hmm. hey, you know, Ricky just started a company, but you didn't just start a company. Mm-hmm. You've been in the industry for umpteen years, Mm -hmm. trained under the best, trained under legends, Mm -hmm. saved a company. So when somebody looks at your story and doesn't know your full background, Mm -hmm. how do you put that in perspective for them? When they say, I launched a company, why can't I do what you do? Uh, It's a combination of things. Uh, You know, what's your image out there? Your name out there, is it, you know, good? Or is it mud? Uh, you know, because you don't know when you want to meet people to you need people. And, uh, you know, I remember when Gus and I opened the, the first day, I said, I don't know. I'm going to get on the phone and call somebody. But uh, Ernesto uh, one time says, Ricky, he starts trying to stop me for doing it. He says, what I learned when I left the Gloria." And I found it, uh, you know, uh, East BC. All my friends were that there. They're not there. And, but he was different. 
because he didn't have that personal connection to a lot of these owners. He was just a, the owner. And so because I did so many events, so many handshakes, so many connections, that uh, it was natural for me to slide over. So I don't know how anybody does it without history because money is not the answer. Mm -hmm. I have seen so many companies come and go because they have so much money, but they have no image, they have no direction, no, no, no story. And all this is about a story connection. Connect that story. Can I Absolutely. connect to your story? I, I'm in the business. I, I, you know, I own a sporing store. How did you do this? You know what? Just take care of your people. Take care of your customers. And so that's, to me, was very important. So it's hard to explain. I could say I'm lucky. I have a business plan. I've worked a plan. I have great partners uh, from box factories to blenders to importers. Everything is the cream of the crop that and so I select it. So if I had one time, I'm not 30 years old. I don't have the ability to fail of West Tampa, pick myself up and do it again. I have no time uh, because uh, my age, I knew if I don't line up the perfect team, we're going to fail. So I just lined up the perfect team uh, for us for a to Z, everybody, even my band guy that makes my bands are the best of the band guys, uh, the best manufacturer of boxes. And now we're discovering, we lucked out and discovering this little boutique factory in Nicaragua that I couldn't find on a map for you. But somebody introduced me and we create this uh, connection and it's just beautiful. So, oh, um, as you're going through, and you're and you're telling your friends, obviously not at general or, or or whatever, but you're telling your friends that you trust. Hey, I'm looking to start this company. I'm looking to start this company. How much of the are you serious at your age? Did you get, and how did you? deal with that mentally does that make sense no yeah, because uh, nobody asked me that uh, because i started every conversation i'm doing this for my daughter for my family for me for my okay. partner that's it that's it and so they did well what's your age bro they knew me and it, if you know me for one minute or one thousand minutes you know one thing i'm true to myself and are true to everybody. Uh, so when I said I'm doing this for my family, I knew the power of what I'm saying because I'm now saying I'm not doing it for the corporation. And nobody likes the corporation. Nobody wants to. It's hard to support and have the corporation. But what I've realized, what Benji said all the time, cigar, premium cigar business are for families. And if you have that connection, everybody can relate to that because every shop owner has a wife working, a son working there, a daughter working there, a, a, a cousin, a nephew, a best friend. There's all connection. So now you have the, uh, the ability to say, I'm not working for the man. I'm working for my family. Bro, pull your fucking wagons around. We're going to fucking protect you. We're going to fucking be there for you. Because are we knew that uh, General Cigar, a lot of doors would shut for us. Because, again, we're General Cigar. We're, you know, we're too big to hug. Who's in charge? General Cigar. Who's the president of General Cigar? I know. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. Now, you can say. I know the faces the of the brands. Yeah. Now, who is in charge of Rocky Patel? I know him. Who's in charge of, uh, you know, Fuente? I know Corlito or Cynthia. Who's in charge of uh, West Tampa? I know Ricky or Gus. It's a connection. It's easy to hug an individual, not a corporation. So let me ask you a question, and you don't have to answer if you don't want to. A lot of 
businesses have been, a lot of the cigar companies have been bought up. And with this, and this will be the last question on this, and I'm going to move to your family because that's very important to you. Mm -hmm. If General approached you, I don't care how many years from now, two minutes, a hundred years or whatever. Would you ever sell as long as you're alive? Right now, it's not our, our game plan to sell this company. Uh, but because of my age, I think we have a five-year plan. At 67, I'm going to, because I started this company with 62. At 67, we're going to get the leaders together. That's going to be my family, Gus's family. I'm going to take a back back seat. I'm going to really kind of retire. Do you want to continue or you want to put it up for sale? And so I think it was going to rely on Sarah and Gus because they're younger. to say, no, with your help and your guidance, we can continue. And that, that's our, our plan. We're, you know, never say never. Everybody, everybody is for sale. Every manufacturer is for sale. Everyone. General Scar approaches me and hundred million dollars. I bro, <laughs> where do I sign that? Doctor, <laughs> because now I can say to Gus and Sarah, do whatever you want to do. Because you allow me to dream and you work with them to dream, it's your time. Dream. Sarah, if you want to buy a fucking you know, a yoga studio in fucking South America, you have the money. You can, you know what? Charge them nothing. Charge them a buck. You don't need the money. Yeah. So, but right now we don't have a plan, but never, so never. But what I would love to do, uh, what I, I hope I would be able to do before it's over is work with my team with General Cigar again. That would what? be such a blessing. Not General Cigar. I don't fucking really care about General Cigar. Sure. But I do care about everybody that I work from every salesman, every marketing guy, and every factory guy. If General Cigar ever wakes up and says, we can still make money out of this guy? Yeah, how? Make him a cigar with him. I would be the first in line to say, I'm in. I'm in. Because so I you- know what my team and I could produce in that factory. So would you, if, if at 67, mm-hmm. you guys decide to put the company up for sale and if general, obviously I just want to discourage anybody right now watching. These are all hypotheticals. Yeah, if yeah. the company stays around, even if it goes to wherever Rick will most likely be there in some sort of consultative, consultative right, right. approach or position. So these are all hypotheticals. Just, just, just throwing that out there, Rick. Disclaimer. I feel like I should have a disclaimer on the bottom. Um, if that happened and General bought it, would you consider that full circle for you? And you would be able oh, to now sure. retire, sure. almost fulfilling a full circle work goal? Yeah. 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 Does yeah. that make sense? No, it would uh, be, uh, you know, a, an ending for my last chapter of the cigar. This is my last chapter. This is it. This is it. There's no more, one more chapter. This is it. And so to complete that would be great. But the only fight I would have is I'm going back to corporate. Is that it's right for West Tampa, not right for Ricky. It's right. So there, there is a company that has already approached us. To buy, us. and I said, "Bro, you know, he got to be kidding me." I'm, my 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 value is not well. That's the reason we want to buy today, uh, because mm-hmm. we see where you're going and we know what you can do. Uh, but uh, I said, "But my value is not there." I said, "Well, we want to buy you before you're so big that only General Cigar can afford you." I said, <laughs> we want to buy you while you so you're much. cheap. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> So screw you, you. screw but, uh, you. <laughs> this, this, is, this is a family. This is a family. So if I had that guy or that group and General Cigar, same price point, they're going to buy it for the same price, I would go for the family 
oh, not the general score. Just because, oh, again, sure. just because the image, uh, they, what they do uh, to certain brands, I always say it's not a money grab for us. I just wanted to continue it. So, but, uh, you know, never say never, but uh, it's not on our plans right now until, uh, you know, 2026 or 27 that we will say to each other, do we continue? And I hope, I hope for me that I'm when I'm 67. I still have the uh, no. I'm not even no, done. Dude, you're gonna be. Done. Come on, come yeah, on. You're I'm gonna. Be, gone. You look like you're 40. Yeah. Stop. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, like, dude. Yeah, so, come on. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> um, I hope. I hope that uh, works out for us. So next, I want to talk about the apple mm-hmm. of your eye, mm-hmm. the most mm-hmm. outside of your wife, the most important lady of your life, yeah. your daughter, Sarah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I have a daughter. Yeah. I only have one child. Uh, yeah. My little girl everything to me yeah what what were some of the fatherly concerns of going into business with your daughter and if anybody's watching thinking about going into business with Mm -hmm. family Mm -hmm. that's a totally different dynamic right i've talked with al McAuliffe and amanda Mm -hmm. McAuliffe and dan thompson about this and it's a different dynamic when you work with family so what what is it like uh, and what were some of your concerns to work with Sarah? And then the second part to that question is what would some advice be for people to consider before going into business with family? Uh, number one, uh, let's ask you the second question first, because they have to approach you. If I said to Sarah, Oh, Sarah's uh, now yeah. watching. Yeah, so. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. so if I said to Sarah, you know, five years ago, I want you to be a part of this business, uh, she would say no. She's so powerful as a, a young lady. She said, no, that's your dream, Dad, for me. Uh, but that's not my dream for myself. So the only way it started is because Sarah said, I want to be a part of this business. So that's first. It made me... I don't care who you want to build this building, uh, the company for. If they don't want to be a part of it, it's not going to work. I don't care how much money you're going to throw. It's not going to work because you're just, that's your dream. That's not their dream. And so that's number one. So she approached us or, or me to do this. So that try scratch that out. The second one, Sarah had to, t- uh, t- uh, you know, teach me. Very quickly, are you talking to me as dad or boss? Because if you think you're going to get me a car to talk about my personal life at 10 o'clock in the morning, that's not going to happen. If you want to talk to me about business, I'm all ears. We could talk for the next fucking three days. But uh, I had to realize that there's a time for dad to talk to Sarah and business guy to talk to Sarah. And once we kind of separated that, uh, that would, it was easier for us to do what we're doing. And now it's my job to find out what she, her niche is going to be in this uh, company. What do you want to do? Uh, So we have been treating Sarah like a utility player for a baseball team. Oh, second baseman down, Sarah, you're up. Oh, the catcher's up. Sarah, you're up. But that doesn't make a good, uh, you know, pay, uh, a player because he doesn't concentrate on anything. So what we want to do with Sarah is pick your avenue. And whatever avenue you want, that's your avenue. So if I think, oh, you should be sales, she says to me, I don't want to sell. I want to talk about their business. I want to share our, our you know, our history about the, uh, the stories, but I don't want to sell. Okay. That selling is up. Now, now you're going to be the face of the company. The face. Let's talk about the face. Now you're going to be the face that everybody sees. Are you just going to repeat my stories? Because I'm going to, if I do that, you're going to fail. Because my story's already been told by myself. So what are you going to do? She says, okay, train me to be a roller. Because now she has her own story. I, I, I can't roll a cigar, but Sarah can. 
She can't talk about blending. I can. So the perfect combination. Oh, that's a great question for my father. But if you want to experience a factory, what I uh, heard, what I saw, what I smelled, what I felt, I can see, uh, tell, tell that story. But if you want me to repeat my father's stories, no, no. and so you know her. You know how powerful I can set Sarah in a shop in the middle of nowhere. I say, I'll be back in three hours. She knows everybody. And everybody will know the story of West Tampa because she's just that person. She is a really of like me. She, we'd love to entertain. We'd love to share our knowledge. Uh, she should have been a teacher. She definitely, uh, uh, she's going to miss out of that opportunity. She should be a teacher because she's very patient uh, in explaining uh, certain things. But um, teachers don't make a lot of money. So I think she's made the right choice to come with us. But at the end of the day, she has to discover her own story and share her own story. Absolutely. And, you know, one of my mentors, and, and this goes to your point, you know, it's all about building a collage. Mm -hmm. And that collage is your is your life story. Obviously, you're not going to give everybody your story from the first memory to the end. But you build that collage of stories along the way, and that becomes yours. And you you've been on a lot of these shows you've done a lot of these interviews i hope i've given you something different tonight yeah, uh, sure. you have uh at least i from what i've seen in your other shows i, I think this is a little bit different avenue but yep. um how important is it not how important what does it mean as a father for you to sit back and watch your daughter shine in a in a business that mm. has really given you and your family everything mm. and given mm. you so much. What does that mean for you as a father to sit back and and what is the first memory you had of watching Sarah move through this industry? Oh, bro, it's a devastating. It's a hmm. without uh, sharing this here. Uh, fuck, uh, you know, uh, proud. Uh, I knew she could do it. I know her personality. Uh, she, I knew she could do it and she wants to do it. Uh, but, um, I know this, what this scar business has given me the joy, the, the opportunity to shine is what I want to give to Sarah. Because at the end of the day, we are storytellers, uh, because her life and her situation, of meeting so many people around the world, she can identify for so many people struggles. And she, bro, the traveling uh, situation for Sarah is all, all not, you know, <laughs> fucking beautiful. You know, uh, you know, I'm staying in the Red Carlton and fucking South Beach. It's not that. It, it was a struggle. Motel she, she did it by herself. By herself. Ah, she's done traveling because you're running out of money no she didn't ever ask for money and but uh i think this industry can give her two things she loves storytelling sharing and travel and meeting new people and those combinations doesn't come around often especially to be able to work in an environment that you can say there's really nothing i can do bad they're going to say, you're fired. And I don't think Sarah would ever do that, but there's a beauty of that safety net. So you can't reach for the stars, but not worry about, well, I don't hit it. They're going to fire me. No, you reached. All I want you to do is reach for that star. And if it doesn't work, there's another star to reach for. And then another star, and you'll find your star. But in a day, for me to share what I have experienced with her and the doors that have been opened for me, I would love for uh, Sarah to experience because she deserves to have that recognition. Bro, I thought I loved your father. What the fuck? I'm getting this already. Oh, you're coming? <laughs> Not Sarah? Okay. Really? <laughs> but that's, to me, 
that is that's great. A me- it is, bro. It's giving a father, bro. Whatever you did, whatever you did, your wife and you, you did something right because what I've met was a beautiful, very professional young lady, and that's all I want for her. And and so. So here's here's what I think is a difficult question and as well as introspective. As a father, when my daughter, who's two and a half, falls off the couch, mm-hmm. I instantly run over. Oh, you know, are you okay? Are you okay? Are you okay? How hard is it as a father to let her make mistakes that you know she's going to make because you know those, by her making those mistakes or her quote unquote failing at something will make her better. How hard is it for you to not just jump in and correct? That that's not hard because you know it's not gonna be life threatening. You know, he's not, you know, driving a car at ninety per you know miles per hour taking a turn. That can kill you. Don't do that. Uh but I want to to now, if he fails at something or does something wrong, the next time, correct it. You do it again, that's a problem. Again, we really have a problem. But uh, what I've experienced for Sarah, she will fail at something and pick herself up, learn from that, and correct that. And it doesn't experience that failure again, the same one. That's all I ask. Because uh, you want to protect, you want to catch them, but at the end of the day, uh, she doesn't need my guidance to slap her or correct her or guide her. Let's do it. Let's do it together. She knows what she can do, what she can do. And whatever you do, it's insecure. It's insecure. We can overcome. I don't care what you do. She, she just promised some, uh, uh, some cigars for a friend of ours. We're going to do this event with you. I said, for, uh, you know, how many cigars? You need to ask me before you. I, uh, really, I do. So she, I guarantee the next time she has the opportunity, uh, I want you to, uh, you know, sponsor our event. Great. Let me talk to my dad. But this time she did it by herself. Correct it. Let's go. You know how many cigars you need. But uh, it's hard. But you know, life is hard. Uh, so you don't, you know, maybe because of Sarah left us and traveled uh, alone for so long, I don't have that that problem allowing her to go in, uh, by herself and she's going to say something that's wrong or uh, commit to, to something wrong because she knows what she's doing. She's tested in her own personal life. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So how how difficult let me let me ask this a different way. Mm-hmm. When you're when you're let when you're watching, you know, Sarah work, is it hard to not step in, or are you much more of somebody that will? And this is like a boss question are you somebody that will correct more in private versus stepping in? Oh, for sure, for sure, for sure. Again, when we're doing an event to, uh, together, she knows, she knows, you know, people don't know her, they want to get to me. Uh, so, uh, it's not me. Hey, 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 step aside. They're here for me. She's already guiding to, to, to me. Uh, but, uh, as far as, you know, uh, you know, her, bro, for me to see her interact with, uh, anybody like the big smokes or she did uh, some big smokes where it's beautiful, bro, because it, it's just, you know, look at her. Why would I ever say, Ooh, Ooh. Let me talk to this guy because I can see the smile, the connection he's having with this uh, guy. And she knows her avenue. And they say, hey, w- you know, what were you thinking when you blended that cigar? Oh, that's a great question for that guy right there. Dad, he has a question for you. She's never going to say, well, we're thinking about this because if she knows that's not my avenue. Yeah. So, yeah. So. Now on to a personal question for you. How important, and I love asking this question because because mm-hmm. most people are taken aback by it. How, in, how important is it for, 
for for you to have had certain failures in your life. And if you would like to share with us, you know, a, a failure that you haven't shared before that that you learned immensely, I would love that. But how important is it for people? Because they look at you and go, Ricky's been blessed. He's been blessed mm-hmm. with, you know, walking in the CAO, becoming a master mm-hmm. blender. Now, explain to us some of the failures that you went through and how that developed and shaped you. Uh, the failures are, you know, uh, the responsibility. Uh, when they gave you the responsibility, you have to run this this blending for this company. Uh, and I failed sometimes. Uh, you know, we launched two or three cigars that didn't reach the market. And so you learn from that sort of experience through our life, bro, through our life. Uh, you know, failures. I didn't graduate college. I didn't go to college. That's a failure in my eyes. I didn't have the opportunity to do that. So in my eyes, where would I be if I had that opportunity? But now that you kind of went through that gauntlet of life, I can look back. Now, now I didn't need that. I didn't need that. So for years, I thought I was a failure because I'm dealing with everybody I was dealing with. Oh, I went to this college. I was this guy. Uh, and bro, and I had no story. Huh, I was a salesman. I was a salesman. And so I thought that was a failure. And now I look at now. There's so many avenues to be successful. And my success is not based on money. My success is based on when I look at my partners with anybody I work with, anybody, my family, my wife or my daughter, and they smile back at me. That is what I think. Not the money. The money was come. The money will come if you do the right thing. Good cigar, good story, good company. That'll come. It'll come. But if you think money is your driving goal, you're going to fail. You're going to fail. So success for me equals just picking yourself up and trying. When I had my stroke, uh, when I was 47 years old, when I had my stroke, you're never going to be able to talk or walk again. Oh, fuck, bro. Fuck, you don't know me. You don't know me. You know, I need to go through this. So I, we have the power to overcome, to fail, to think the life is, you know, kind of dealt your bad card. Play it, play it, and move on. And so, uh, you know, if you think to me, if I can share anything, just don't concentrate on that door that just shut, that failure. Look down the hallway. There's so many doors on that hallway, but there's so many people, and that door is shut. And just look at that door. I was fired. I was sick. I had cancer. I had a stroke. Something. Uh, I have a bad life. I had a bad family. Uh, I didn't go to college. Those are doors shutting, and you can stare at that door or look down the hallway. Okay, that's your shut. Maybe I just go. And there are other doors are going to open for you. That's it. And most so, people dude, are the cause of their own doors shutting. Oh, for sure. And it's, it's that self-deprecation yeah, of, yeah. I don't have a degree, you yeah. know? Yeah. Um, it's all bullshit. It's all bullshit. It really is. You can, again, uh, I'm happy with uh, what we're doing. Maybe it doesn't make you happy. Maybe you need uh, to make a million dollars a year. We don't. I don't. Sarah does it. We know what, uh, you know, if I, if Sarah can uh, go on vacation and visit a friend and, uh, you know, uh, in Canada, he's going to go and visit a dear friend in Canada. She has the opportunity to do that. She has the money and the time. For her, that's worth a million dollars. Of You can't do this. You have to sit in this office and just pound it and pound it and pound it. I will sacrifice money for happiness, and that's what we're basing this company on. Don't worry about the money. The money will follow if you do the right things. No, and I completely agree with you. As somebody that I've been in sales 20 years myself, Ricky, mm-hmm. 
um, both in account management, direct sales, door to door, car, you name it. I pretty much right. sold it. Right, right. The first time I hit my quote unquote made it dollar amount yearly, right. Right. it was hard to find the drive to move forward beyond that because you hit it. That was your goal. Right, right, right. Family has since taken over my goal. And that's what I'm hearing from you. Family is your driving force, first, second, and third. Fourth is maybe money. But sure. your first three is driving forces is your family. For sure. Correct? And uh, family to me is everybody's working with us. Now, you can be my blood family or you can be in my partner's family or you, the, uh, you know, the factory family. It's all family. Because Correct. I can't do what I'm doing without you guys. So I don't care if you think I'm the best of the best. Give me a bad factory, bad tobacco. I don't care how you, good you think you are. You're not going to succeed. And so family is the driving for Sarah and Susan to once in a while look at me with a smile. And you're doing this. You're doing this. You <laughs> fucking rat bastard. I can't believe you're doing this. You're, and you're I undereducated. You're from the broken family, but you're doing this. How? Maybe just because I'm so blind and, and naive. I don't fucking care. Let's do it. Let's do it. Well, well, I'll tell you, that smile from the wife and daughter is worth more than any six-figure, seven-figure salary yeah. Yeah. Um, ever. And. Yeah. I always used to know that from my wife, that my wife's smile always kind of soothed any issues going on with me at work. But man, when you walk in the house, just think back to Sarah being two, three, you walk in the house and you are that little girl's only world. Like, yeah, yeah. I don't think I, and, and, and part of me thinks I'm not out of place saying this, but you will always look at Sarah as that two, three year old running up to you in my some baby girl. fashion. She's Absolutely. My baby girl. I don't care if she's 60. I'm going to be fucking 90. You're still my <laughs> baby girl. Absolutely. You know? And that is the image that drives, you know? You know, at the end of the day, uh, are you happy? Are you satisfied with your life? Did we provide you a foundation that was given to me for the, you know, cigar business? That you could build your empire state building off of, not one floor. And so I, I hope that uh, Sarah realizes, just give me five years and you're going to be able to say, I'm done. I want to do this. And we're going to uh, give you the uh, opportunity with money to do whatever you want. And that's no, absolutely. My goal. And that's, that's, my goal that's goal. amazing. So I want to kind of end the show here before I get to the lightning round questions. Okay. Um, this is a question that stumps some people. Um, define mentor in your opinion. A teacher, a guiding light, a unselfish person. Um, that to me is everything. And that is what I have received throughout my life. Uh, from the first guy that uh, was my first job of selling, took me aside and trained me how to sell whatever I'm selling. Uh, that's, you know, that to me is a mentor. Uh, if I can be honest, be truthful, the guiding light, don't go to this direction. I did it. Do this direction. This is better for you. That to me is what uh, I want to do. And I don't think of myself other than my daughter that I'm there to provide this information. But I realize the position I have that I am, regardless if I'm talking to them, just being me will help somebody and work for him. And this is his style. It was honored, good uh, person, a friendly person, very engaging. That's my, my style. And that so you can train or teach somebody to follow your path without speaking a word of, of, of what you want to do, uh, because you're just doing it yourself. My daughter just got. Hmm. 
she just went to uh you know uh uh to church and got uh you know um blessed and uh found her word and I said Sarah now that you have all this energy to share this word don't share it out loud share it by your doing that more people what you don't want to do is a Christian come to you this is my way this is the right way you need to do this you need to do this eh, stop legalistic but if if you just follow your life your path somebody's going to say why are you always happy what's everything working out for you because I have the belief well you never share that with me it's not me for me to share with you if you want that uh, guidance. I would be here for you, but I'm living my life. If you think my life is something you want to, this this is the path I'm following. So you can do more with your actions than any words you can speak. So my mentor is just being me. And if you think that you can tear away a little bit of a piece of me to apply to you to make you a better person, perfect. Now you want my information, my knowledge. I'll sit there for hours and days with you if you want that. And that, that that's absolutely incredible. So you're an open book with it. Could you, and, and, and the reason why I love asking these questions, I have around, like, and I say this all the time, I have around 12, 13 mentors in my life. Some right. are personal, some overlap into business, and some overlap into both. You know, um, so... Could you have gotten where you are without mentors in your life for no, guidance? No, no, no. My mentors were my education, my college. So, no, I couldn't. Uh, if I was that guy, I, I know, I don't, I don't care. I don't want to, you know, learn from you. I would, I would not be here today. I, I, I. So my mentors, the guys that guide me, the ladies, uh, the family members that guide me, made me. So I've always looked at all these people in my life that have really taught me this way, not this way, was my college. Was that, okay, okay. So sometimes uh, I was kind of unique in my, uh, you know, when I was growing up because I didn't have a father figure. I was always gravitating to the older gentleman. And so if I went to work, I was always buying who's the oldest guy in this room. That's the guy that I was going to go to. Because if it's selling tires, oh, you don't want to talk to Bob. He's been selling tires for, you know, fucking 30 years. What does he know? We're the new guys. We, you know, I, bro, there's a reason he's been selling tires for 30 years. He's good. Right. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna fucking talk to him. What do you know about selling tires? You're fucking, you know, you're you're my age. Nothing. So I've always so for me, uh that guidance came or my education came through people that gave me uh my path in my life today. Okay, so now let's flip the script. At sixty five sixty four, sixty five, you've had more than uh your share of mentors. Mm-hmm. What is your definition of a mentee? Mm. Be willing to uh, listen. Uh, be willing to say to yourself, it's not everything he's saying is bits and pieces. You can have a conversation with somebody for an hour and you can take away one thing. Oh, he used this word. I like, a, I like that word. That's the only thing you took away. So I would say to uh, Sarah, listen to everybody and take what you want and throw the other shit away. But everybody has something. One word, one sentence, one story. I, oh, I've never looked at it that way. Maybe I'll change my way of thinking. And that's, so if I was you looking for a mentor, Understand, they're not teaching you to be exactly like them. They're teaching you what I have learned through my past. This is right. This is wrong. This is a good direction, a bad direction. And you use whatever you want. Even a bomb off the street 
what can I learn from the bum? Maybe that bum will say to you, I was in school. I was going to be a doctor, but I get hooked in drugs. And now I'm living under the bridge. And you see me every day with a fucking sign, please, a cup of coffee. He can say, drugs are bad. It's up to you to say, okay, I know that, but now you have the experience. You talk to this guy. Oh, my God. You came for that great family. You went to that school. And this is what kind of, well, yeah, yeah. Are you a bad person or angry person? You can learn for everybody, everybody. But it's not up for you to, you know, every conversation, don't take or expect you're going to take away 100%. If you could take from any conversation two to five percent from that conversation and apply it to yourself, you're going to be a better person. And the more you apply that, the more it's going to be 90 percent of me is based on everybody I've talked to throughout my life. This was what made Ricky. God, I love how just just unbelievably optimistic you've been and like your outlook is just just so great and it just seems like there's just so much positive it almost seems like you it, you you do everything you can to keep negativity away from you and as much positivity around you as possible like you have such a great outlook uh on life and and this has been such a great conversation so in 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 ending here Okay. I want to go back to uh, Tim McCabe's, uh, or I'm sorry, uh, by the way, uh, if you're looking for a rep in Colorado, Smooth Kenny uh, right. said he would like yeah, to be baby. a rep for you. Yeah, uh, Smooth, if you're still watching, reach out to Ricky. Maybe it could yeah, happen. Sure. Maybe it won't. Who knows? Yeah. Um, seems like Ricky's always in the willing to give somebody a chance if they're, if they're worth for it. Sure. Um, right here we have Tim McCabe. Our now this means a lot to me. I am a Lancero uh, whore. Uh, mm. I'm the guy that actually buys boxes of Lanceros. Mm. Are the West Tampa Lancero coming to market, or are they an event only? Uh, they're going to come to market. Uh, maybe uh, we're going to launch the Lancero red, white, and black out to the market. Uh, maybe in the first quarter of next year and uh, what we're doing is it's not going to be a national launch because the size it doesn't work for everybody so what Correct. we're going to do is hand pick people say okay we have these special sizes in the market right now who wants them it's not a force fed oh you know your account uh, for west tampa you need to bring this in it's just part of our uh, makeup Thanks, nope nope and so if you want them they're going to be available to you and we're going to form this little kind of um, a, a club, you want to call it, uh, of these shop owners that are going to have a access to my kitchen. And they're going to be able to say to the shop guys, hey, I went to Ricky's kitchen and I made us a Lancero Red. I have it. Bob, across the street, doesn't have it. He's not a part of Ricky's kitchen. I do. So we want to give the sizes that make – since for that shop, not force feed anybody. So uh, that's a size of all three blends are going to get a release uh, first quarter of next year. And then we're going to follow up with another smaller cigar called the Corona for special guys and up north because of winter time. Oh, you know, we need a smaller cigar. We can't go outside for an hour. We need a, you know, a half an hour. Oh, you have access to Corona's. Not nationally launched, but everybody has access if you want it. Well, I am a buyer of all three boxes of those Lanceros. Uh, if I could give you my money now to get those, I would. Yeah. Uh, let me know if I need to buy Sarah some dinner or something like that. Well, I, I, say, yeah, I, I know <laughs> she, has, she has the key to my uh, 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 house that has the... Uh, the room that has some Lanceros in it. Uh, if you want to, just uh, you know, uh, reach out to Sarah. I need a hat. 
and one or two samples of each blend of the Lanceros. Oh, and I guarantee man. they will be there for you because all you're going to do for us is smoke them, rate about them, and say, bro, when they get to the market, please enjoy these cigars. So yeah, for sure, we'll do that for you. Well, Ricky, I am a I, I'm a fanboy of yours. I followed you oh, through bro. CAO. I followed you through West Tampa. I mean, so much so that I've I, I've made sure that you have been included in our in our charity that yeah. we every year. And everybody, uh, just as a reminder, we do the uh, Rocky Mountain uh, Cigar Night charity once a year. Ricky was very integral. West Tampa was very integral in helping us raise thirty thousand dollars for a wounded warrior to get a dog next year. We will be presenting the dog. Uh, Ricky will be there um, mm -hmm. next year for that dog presentation. So if if you ever wanted a shot, you live in Colorado and you didn't, you wanted to meet Ricky before Rocky Mountain Cigar Fest. Tickets will be on sale for Rocky Mountain Cigar Night. Uh, we're looking for January, February. Ricky, as well as several others, a lot of other manufacturers will be there. So uh, from the bottom of my heart, Ricky, thank you for supporting that event. On to the lightning round. What is your favorite yep. rapper? Uh, Broadleaf. Connecticut what Broadleaf. Is, what is your favorite size? A Toro. What is a rapper that you would love to work with but have not? Mm, that might Mexico be a hard would, question for no, you. Mexico would uh, want, but now for West Tampa, Brasilia. Brasilia, for sure. Okay. What is your preferred cut? Uh, a, uh, mm, I use my thumbnail all the time, mm -hmm. so, uh, but I have to do, do a cutter. I love the V cut, but I do it uh, twice, so, so kind of a, a, a X. Yeah, so the X, because I love the airflow, more airflow. The more airflow, the richer your cigars uh, taste in the mouth. You know. What um, What is your favorite strength? Where is your wheelhouse all the time? Uh, medium body. Medium body because uh, it's going to offer you some body, but uh, more flavor. And what about your cerveza? Uh, Bud Light. Bud Light. So you're a beer and cigar guy. Yeah, because Bud Light doesn't, uh, you know, interfere in anything you're tasting. It's water. <laughs> it's water with bubbles, and you get a little buzz. Yeah, so Bud Light, bro. <laughs> Bud Light is great. Where is the Where is your most favorite destination that you've ever traveled? And where is the destination you would love to travel to that you haven't been? Uh, China. Is my favorite uh, destination, and uh, Vietnam would be one of my uh, 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 countries that I want to visit. Interesting. Now, why China? I'm just curious. Uh, because it's so different, bro. I've been to Europe, uh, you know, uh, you know, and Europe. If you kind of close your ears, uh, it looks kind of the same. Uh, old buildings, new buildings, uh, people look the same. Uh, but China, it is so different. Uh, it is not part of this world. It is that shocking difference uh, uh, to just see, you know, people that you recognize but doesn't look like you, doesn't talk like you, doesn't act like you was overwhelming. But uh, it really uh, captured my heart. Uh, if I can go back to China, I would go tomorrow if I could. I love Europe. Uh, I love, you know, Italy and Spain and, you know, Germany and all of that. It's really good. Uh, people, great smokers. But, uh, you know, Asia to me is uh, kind of where I kind of gravitate to. And, uh, you know, just I love the food. I like the yes. culture. And so uh, I think uh, China, then uh, uh, one country that I really want to visit is Vietnam. Interesting. I love Asian food. Yeah. All of it. All of it. The yeah. raw, the yeah. cooked, yeah. all of yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. So I know you're a God-fearing man. You're a Christian. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
when you meet your creator someday, what do you hope to hear? Mm, I'm proud of you. Uh, because um, where you started uh, off at uh, and what you ended up with, He's proud. Absolutely. No. It, it, how? Sorry, how yeah. No, yeah. no, yeah. no, no, mm -hmm. please. Thank you yeah. for, thank you for showing the emotion. Yeah. 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 I appreciate that. Uh, Cause that's a heartfelt goal. convention. Their conviction. Yeah. It's my uh, good driving goal. Like I said to you earlier, I just want, Sarah and Susan be proud of me. I want my partner to be proud of me. I want to, every shop that ever took on CAO La Gloria of West Tampa to be proud of me. And so that's if I meet my maker and he says, bro, you turned out okay. You're a good man. So let me ask you this then. Mm -hmm. When you when you meet your creator, if he's if they smoke cigars, what cigar would you bring them? Cologne and a red, because we're not going to have. You have to sample both, uh, both. Uh, <laughs> but uh, if I have to uh, do one, uh, I would uh, right now cologne because I know uh, how hard we worked on that cigar and how proud we were uh, to launch the cigar. But uh, that was the cigar that I would be very proud to share with anybody to represent. Who am I as a cigar maker? Taste the cigar. Don't worry about all this shit. Taste this cigar. And uh, I think nine out of ten people will walk away. That's a good cigar, bro. That's a it good is. cigar. Yeah. It's a very good yeah. cigar. Yeah. How do you want your how do you want your memory to be in the cigar industry when you're no I, longer I, involved? I I hope that everybody when they hear my name. Or want to say my name to somebody starts or ends with a smile. Is it because whatever you say between those smiles is bullshit? It's your opinion. But if you can start with a smile and spin this with a smile, that we're going to indicate to somebody. I don't understand why he, but he does. He really. Respected that guy and loved that guy. So I, I think uh, if anybody shares any stories of me, it comes with, mm, I met that fucking guy. I don't want that. I want, oh, my God, Ricky. Ricky? Oh, my God. Let me tell you the story when I met Ricky. And that would be, fuck, yeah. Yeah. I sincerely. Yeah. I sincerely well, did. Well, Ricky, you are one of the most humble people uh, that I that I have met in this industry, uh, and and you are just an absolute gem to the oh, cigar world. What you have you, done will forever go on long past you. Um, and and us hardcore cigar guys will always keep that memory alive of what you have you, done for this industry. Thank you so much hmm. for coming on this show. It really, truly meant a lot to me. And and everybody, thank you so much for watching tonight. Yeah, this for sure. Another live episode of the Rocky Mountain Cigar Show here at the Smoking Studios. Big shout out to all the sponsors that make this show remotely possible. La Aurora Cigars, BAMP Cigars, ROCF Cigars. In the description below, you'll see a 15% off promo code. I get nothing. Use it as much as you can. It's just for you guys. Christoph Cigars, Karen Berger Cigars, Sagrado, New Air Humidors, promo code below, McAuliffe Cigars, Big Sky Cigars, Cornell and Deal Pipe Tobacco, Dunbarton Tobacco and Trust, as well as Smoke In, the big guy over uh, at SmokeIn.com. Check out their Cigar of the Month Club. West Tampa has been featured in their Cigar of the Month Club. That's the amazing cigars you can get. Thank you so much, Ricky, for coming on. Truly means a lot. We've been trying to plan this for a while, and I'm so glad and so grateful to be able to call you a friend. 
to be able to call you somebody that I follow in this industry and all the great things to come from you and West Tobacco, West Tampa Tobacco and Sarah in the future, as well as my forever gratefulness of you supporting uh, Rocky Mountain Cigar Night. Thank you so much for being a friend, a great man, and somebody for people to look up to in this industry. Appreciate right, you. Thank you so much for your time, bro. I love you, bro. Thank you. I love you too, man. Stick around for a quick sec. Thank you to everybody. And until we see you again, smoke what you like. Smoke as often as you can. Have a great, great rest of your week. Bye, everyone.